Good morning, friends. Good morning. Good to see you all here this morning. Well, on the one hand, we come to worship the Lord our God. On the other hand, we come to reestablish the relationship we have with our Creator through our Savior, Jesus. In his presence, we feel the breath of the Holy Spirit enlivening our spirits so that we may be his disciples and minister in the name of this community. For these things, we praise God this day. <laughs> Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all people come join your voices to raise. Letting every note that we bring in worship be filled with gladness and praise. God's steadfast love And now I invite those who are able to rise and let us sing our opening hymn, number 275, Who is my mother? Who is my brother? of the craziness of life. Let your spirit help us focus on your truth, on what is real, real, and what is heavenly. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. Please join me in the invocation. Lord God, you call us here and bless us by your presence. In the midst of the craziness of this world, you guide us and set our feet on firm foundations. Grant us strength where there is weakness. Grant us hope where there is darkness. And endurance where there is doubt. Open our eyes to the vision Jesus gives us, that we may follow in his path and be his disciples. Now, now and, and forevermore. forevermore. Amen. Crazy. That's what the opponents of Jesus said about him. They said he had lost his mind. There was controversy at this 
uh, scripture reading and what's going on at that time. In fact, even his disciples ran after him. Got to shut him up. The, the Pharisees are going to come after him. He's nuts. He's lost his mind. Come on, we got to make him be quiet. Let's listen to what the Bible says about that. The crowd came together again so they could not even eat. When the family of Jesus heard it, they went out to restrain him, for people were saying, he has gone out of his mind. And the scribes who came down from Jerusalem said, he has Beelzebul, and by the ruler of the demons, he casts out demons. And Jesus called them to him and spoke to them in parables. How can Satan cast out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house is divided against itself, that house will not be able to stand. And if Satan has risen up against himself and is divided, he cannot stand. But his end has come. And no one can enter a strong man's house and plunder his property without first tying up the strong man. Then indeed the house can be plundered. Truly I tell you, people will be forgiven for their sins and whatever blasphemies they utter. But whoever blasphemies against the Holy Spirit can never have forgiveness, but is guilty of an eternal sin. For they had said, he has an unclean spirit. Then his mother and his brothers came, and standing outside, they sent to him and called him. A crowd was sitting around him, and they said to him, Hey, your mother and your brothers and sisters are outside asking for you. And he replied, Who are my mother and my brothers? And looking at those who sat around him, he said, here are my mother and my brothers. Whoever does the will of God is my brother and sister and mother. Here ends our scripture reading for today. May the words of our Savior find a home in our hearts and in our minds. Amen. <clears throat>
crazy. That's what they called him. They said, he's gone out of his mind. In our scripture text for today, it is still early in the ministry of Jesus. But prior to the verses in our text, the gospel writer tells us that Jesus has appointed 12 to be his apostles. Jesus then sent these 12 out to proclaim the good news of God's kingdom. He also gave them authority to cast out evil spirits. Following this sending out, Jesus and the 12 have returned to home base, to Capernaum, to the home of Simon Peter. But the ministry of Jesus and the apostles has been so successful that people from all around the district are streaming into Capernaum to see and to be healed by Jesus and to hear his stories. In fact, so many people have arrived that there's hardly any time or space for Jesus and the apostles to sit down and to have a meal. And when the family of Jesus hear what's going on, they become upset. Because what they hear from others is that Jesus is crazy. He's gone out of his mind. So they come to Capernaum too. I am inclined to believe that they are seeking to protect Jesus from his detractors. Well, let me ask you, have you ever met someone who was crazy? Some of these crazy individuals have come to my office to talk about their lives, wondering how things could be made better. I have visited others in the psych ward at the local hospital. I've even visited still others in institutions meant for the insane. Such people can and are often rejected by others in our society. Normal, quote unquote, normal people often want nothing to do with these crazy people, thank you very much. I've even seen cruel things done to such people. Some people deemed crazy by others are made the butt of jokes. Those living in the quote unquote nut house are often laughed at. And it doesn't have to be a medical or a psychological diagnosis made by a medical professional. For even a flippant remark, you know he's crazy, don't you? Yes, even a flippant remark can damage another person or destroy a relationship between family men members or friends. Such put-downs can even lead one person to physically abusing the so-called crazy person. Such physical, <coughs> such physical or mental treatment can lead to low self-esteem or a lack of self-confidence or even craziness in the life of the victim. People can be so cruel to others. Well, as the family of Jesus make their way to Capernaum to find and to protect Jesus from such abuse, into our gospel story step a group of scribes. They have come from Jerusalem to Galilee, where Jesus is practicing his healing and his teaching ministry. They have an axe to grind. They oppose what Jesus is doing and they are upset at his teachings. We can assume that the ordinary people of the land are no longer coming to the temple in Jerusalem to pray for healing or to hear the teachings of the religious professionals, the priests and the scribes. Instead, they're searching for Jesus. So far, Jesus has driven demonic spirits from the hearts and minds of many people. and They are suddenly and miraculously found to be in their right mind. He has cured lepers, restored a paralytic's leg so he can walk again, and restored a man who had a withered hand. Later on, he will make the blind to see and restore hearing to those who cannot hear. A woman who had been suffering from hemorrhages for 12 long years Jesus will restore her 
And Jesus will bring to life a little girl who has died. Still later on, he will feed a multitude of over 5,000 folk with five loaves of bread and two fish. He will also still a storm at sea with the words, Be still. And the wild winds and the petting, pelting rain will cease, and all will be calm. If someone here in Mansfield were doing things like these, wouldn't you want to meet such a person? Wouldn't you want to hear what that person has to say? Wouldn't you want to see what in the world is going on? Alas, the scribes are threatened by Jesus, and I suspect the religious business in Jerusalem is uh, slipping away. Apparently, the people would rather go to G Jesus than to Jerusalem. At the very least, in the capital city, a donation would be expected, bah, but Jesus carries out his ministry for free. And people can see the miraculous results right there before their very eyes. So the scribes do what people whose power and wealth are threatened often do. They attack the person who in this case is actually doing what the people are hoping for. That is healing and receiving spiritual insights about life with God through the stories of Jesus. Stories which people can remember. Stories which make sense to everyone. Stories which Jesus tells. The scribes attempt to discredit Jesus by saying that he uses evil to cast out evil spirits. In my mind, I can see Jesus looking up to heaven and shaking his head and thinking, this is unbelievable. So he asked the scribes a very simple question. How can Satan cast out Satan? And he goes on to make the point that a house divided against itself cannot stand. Jesus then remarks that, in fact, the scribes are uttering blasphemy by suggesting that good is, in fact, evil. This is, my friends, what the scribes are intimating about Jesus. And in the mind of Jesus, this is unforgivable. It is unforgivable in the sense that their spiritual blindness, that is seeing evil where there is none and calling good evil, this makes it impossible for a person to admit that they are wrong. So having responded to the scribes in their attempt to discredit him, we now find Jesus sitting among those who have come to Capernaum to see Jesus the healer and to listen to his stories. And then someone approaches Jesus to let him know that his mother and his brothers and his sisters are standing outside and asking for him. Friends, you remember that at the beginning of today's scripture text, the family of Jesus were on their way to Capernaum to protect and defend Jesus because some people were saying, he's crazy, he's lost his mind. And in my mind's eye, I can see Jesus pause and then look around at the faces of those who are looking to him for healing. And then to look into the eyes of those around him who are looking back at him and awaiting another story to heal their hearts and to help them make sense of life and to better connect them to God. And, that I, and then I imagine that as he looks around at all of these people, he suddenly senses another teaching moment. And with this insight, Jesus remarks, who is, my, who is my mother and my brothers? And I can see him swing his arm and his hand around to include the whole crowd. And he says, here are my mother and my brothers. Whoever does the will of God is my brother and sister and mother. Did you hear that? We 
are the family of Jesus, you and I. And he shares how we are all of us children of God, each one of us a beloved child of our Creator. We are all members of the family of Jesus. We are all family to one another. Each one of us is connected to everyone else. We're all children of God. We're all of us family. And what especially makes this group a family is our desire to do God's will here on earth. What makes this group a family is that we're trying our best to discover what God wants us to be doing in this life and discover how God wants us to treat one another and not only our friends and our family but our enemies as well. Today friends open your ears and let the words of Jesus sink into your hearts. The heavenly kingdom Jesus brings to earth is an inclusive one. All of us are welcome. All of us are included. All of us count. And even though not a single one of us is perfect, even though some of us may be <laughs> a little bit crazy, Nevertheless, the arms of Jesus reach out to embrace all of us as a family. And for this, we praise God. Amen? Amen. I want to introduce the Lynn to all of you. The Lynn is our new secretary, uh, and um, she's been with us for two weeks now. Congratulations, you made it. <laughs> you passed you. so far. Glad to, yeah. glad to have you. I wanted all of you to be able to see her face. So now you know who she is. And uh, at the close of our service of worship today, if you are so inclined, please come and introduce yourself to her so that she can put some faces and names together. Okay? Uh, she would love to do that. Uh, she's been in training for two weeks, and we want to say thanks to um, uh, Joyce Eaton, who has uh, been working with her. And now you're on your own. Oh, golly. <laughs> so far, so good. Yeah, she is doing a good job. And so um, I'll be praying for the Lynn, as well as for all of the, uh, the generosity of all of you who are members of our church. Let's pray. Oh God, we give you thanks for the generosity of all of those who are giving today to support ministries like the meal at St. Luke's Point of Grace and all the other ministries this church carries out. And we pray that your spirit will bless those ministries. I thank you for the generosity of the members of St. John's who give to our church and its work and I pray that your spirit will richly bless them in return. And use all of our gifts to further the work of Jesus in our community and in this world, that love and peace may abound. We thank you for sending Dalin to us to be our new secretary. We give you thanks for her and her skills and for her enthusiasm. And I just pray that your spirit would continue to be with her as she serves this church and all of our members through her ministry with us, may all of us uh, be encouraged and uh, led even closer to you and your love for us. All of these things I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And let us prepare ourselves for this time of communion by singing hymn number 461, and you may remain seated as we sing, Let Us Break Bread Together.
those words of invitation, I invite us now to join together in this litany for communion. Luke the Evangelist wrote of our risen Savior, who at the table with two of the disciples took bread and blessed and broke it and gave it to them. Their eyes were opened and they recognized the risen Christ in the breaking of the bread. In company with all believers, in every time and beyond time, we come to this table to know the risen Christ in the breaking of the bread. God be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to God. Let us give thanks to God most high. It is right to give God thanks and praise. Let us pray. Eternal God, who has created the heavens and the earth, giving breath to every living thing, we thank you for all the gifts of creation and for the gift of life itself. We thank you for making us in your image, for forgiving us when we act as though you have no claim on us, and for keeping us in your steadfast care. We rejoice in your Son, Jesus Christ, who lived as one of us, and shared the joys and sorrows of life as we know it, and who remained obedient to your purposes, even to his death on the cross. And we thank you that in Christ's resurrection, you have stamped his death with victory by raising him in power and granting him authority over all things. And in the beloved community of your church, we anticipate Christ's return. We take courage from the abiding presence of your Holy Spirit in our midst. We offer you our praise for women and men of faith in every age who stand as witnesses to your love and justice. With all the prophets, martyrs, and saints, and all the company of heaven, we glorify you. We remember that on the night of betrayal and desertion, Jesus took bread, gave you thanks, broke the bread, and gave it to the disciples, saying, This is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. This is the body of the living Christ. And in the same way, Jesus took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so ministering to you in his name, I invite you to come forward. Here at St. John's United Church of Christ, we practice what we call open communion. That means that anyone who wishes to commune is welcome at this table. You don't have to be a member of this church or of any particular church. What we ask is that you be seeking after God in your heart. You uh, do not need to be sinless, for we believe that God forgives all our sin. Nor do you need to be perfect, for God is in the process of perfecting each and every one of us.
Friends, according to the Apostle Paul, when all is said and done, three things will remain, faith, hope, and love. Of these three, however, he says, the greatest is love. May the love of God go with you to bless you in the days ahead. Amen.